Dear Dungeons & Dragons 5e players, I know that it seems like wherever you look online you'll find tons of blogs and BuzzFeed articles or whatever talking about all the crappy things that drive Dungeon Masters crazy. And I also know that it seems like every DM you talk with will have a list of the crap their players put them through that they hate and they can't wait to tell anyone who will listen how much they hate them. But I want you to know a little secret. You guys do a lot of stuff that we secretly love that honestly, I don't think it's talked about enough. So today I thought I'd take a little glass half full look at all of the best D&D player habits that DMs absolutely love. Also known as why Eric is secretly our favorite player. But first, it's sponsor time because uh, I kind of got addicted to Warhammer a little bit over the quarantine and uh, yeah, it's, it's not cheap. Huge shout out to Deck of Mini with their blazing Kickstarter going on for only a few more days, guys. More animated spells. Uh, I love, love, love these things. And not only are they freaking gorgeous, but honestly, they're a great tool to keep at hand even if you run your games online like I do. Uh, yeah, they've already blasted through $700,000 raised. And frankly, the stretch goals at this point are getting kind of insane, including some new spell art from some of your favorite YouTubers right here in the D&D community. So I'll throw a link down below for you guys to check it out for yourself. I don't make commission at all. However, it does let Deck of Mini know that I sent you over. So, you know, when you go and just absolutely drool over all of their goodies over there, maybe, you know, use the, the link in the description of this video, you know, like use that link. That That's, that's the link. On a serious note, thank you Deck of Mini for being a part of the Taking 20 team. I appreciate it. Also, before I forget, and because people will ask in the comments, uh, The Soaring Spite, uh, Sam Hine, and Night Haunts, because let's be honest, they're like the coolest models ever. And uh, real quick, stick around for the end of this video because I do have some people here on YouTube that I want to talk a little bit about. All right, so right out of the gate, we have a really big one, role playing in combat. Oh man, do we love when players remember that just because initiative has been rolled, that that doesn't mean that role playing suddenly goes out the window. During a game, we're in the middle of running multiple stat blocks and keeping up with the initiative tracker, reading spells, helping players with rules, and placing AOE markers down on our virtual tabletop of choice. And on top of all of that, we're trying to be uniquely descriptive in our 723rd attack of the campaign by generic orc fodder number 19. And when we describe the attack as the orc rushes you, slamming his sword down on you as you raise your blade just in time to deflect it aside with a sharp clang, Brian, you look over to see the orc hammering down dangerous blows against Sabrina. What do you do? And then Brian's like, I attack. I rolled a 19. Uh, it's a teeny bit deflating. <laughs> But on the other hand, when we hear a player begin to describe the way they cast a spell or call out to another player in combat or taunt a hill giant in their native tongue in order to goad them to ignore the caster or recently down teammate, it's just so much fun for us. And we absolutely love it when players engage in keeping combat narrative with us. The next thing Dungeon Masters love is when players involve them in the character creation process. DMs love when players ask Dungeon Masters about the game's setting and their world building. It's a lot of fun for us, and more importantly, it gets our creative juices going. A little tip I'll give here is to ask a question where the DM can elaborate and be willing to adjust based on what your DM says. An example of a absolutely perfect question, in my opinion, would be something like, uh, hey DM, I'd like my character to have some form of militaristic background. What city might make for a good hometown for them? This is just the perfect question. And if you want to make your DM happy in your next game, ask them this. Trust me, they'll love it. It implies you have a good concept already and that you want to make your character fit their world instead of showing up with a character and expecting the DM's world to sort of fit around them. Seriously, guys, we love collaborating with you uh, during the character creation process. We love it. The third item on our list of things that DMs love is when you give your character a voice that isn't Gruffy McGruffface. Uh, and don't pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about here either. It's not who we are underneath, but what do we do 
that defines us. Uh, yeah, now I'm being cheeky here, but it's, uh, it's also true. And just to add, I'm happy whenever a player chooses to do a voice for their character, and I never expect my players to do one. Giving your character a voice that isn't gruff, though? Man, DMs, we, we just love that. No, Mr. Wayne. I expect you to die. Uh, another great player habit that Dungeon Masters love is when a player asks really good story-driven questions to an NPC. Man, there's nothing like writing up a character or subplot to a character who is acting like a quest giver and having your players actually dig into the information that said NPC has to share instead of just being like, bro, who do we kill next and where do they live? Yeah, Dungeon Masters also really love this because it tells us that the players are coherently following the story and making the right connections. Which leads me to the next thing DMs love, uh, players that take good session notes or really any notes or like just a name. Like seriously, just write down a damn name once in a while. Like a name, that's all we're asking. Just remember the main villain's name at least. Okay, okay, glass half full, glass half full. I have a lot of sarcastic comments that I wanna make about this, but I'll just leave it like this. If you go around leaving comments on videos about how Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition is all about storytelling and role playing and combat is just a lame mini game, Cody, and you don't take notes, uh, that tells me and your DM that all of that, that's just lip service. However, Dungeon Masters love it when a player takes really good notes. If this is you for your group, you're, you're probably our favorite player. It's the truth. Uh, the next great player habit won't apply to everyone, but we love it when a player masters whatever virtual tabletop tool that the group is using. Oh man, I honestly don't think that I can overstate this. We love, love, love players who learn their online tools. Having been a Roll20 Dungeon Master for multiple years and then upgrading to Fantasy Grounds for even longer, I know the struggles of explaining how to play online to players in the middle of revealing portions of the map and moving monsters and checking initiatives and pulling up spells and balancing playlists of music all at the same time. But man, when a player shows up to my Fantasy Grounds game and is like, I cast Fireball on this space, hitting these three enemies, and then they take the one full whole second to actually click and target them, and we see the saves all done automatically in Fantasy Grounds, and then the player knows how to actually target them with the correct damage. Oh, oh my goodness. We love you guys when you do that. One teeny little note that I will mention is that if you're a player that's like, I always know what to do on my turn, so I keep combat moving, but you won't spend maybe like five minutes outside of the game to refresh your knowledge on your virtual tool of choice, and it's kind of all for naught. It doesn't really matter if you're still stopping the game down. So major props to the players that go above and beyond to learn Fantasy Grounds or Astral or Tabletop Simulator, etc. We love you guys for doing that. Thank you. All right, the next really great player habit that your DM secretly loves is the support character. Now, I don't actually mean a support character in combat like a bard or a cleric, but instead I mean the supportive character in roleplay. This character, in your Dungeon Master's eyes, can be the most important character in the entire group, and we love them. Uh, what exactly do I mean? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever played in a D&D game where everything seemed to grind to an absolute halt? The group might have a clear objective, but the path to said objective locks the group up in 30 minutes of analysis paralysis? This is where having a really great supportive character comes into play, where one or two people might suggest something back and forth and no one wants to take charge, or even worse, multiple characters try to take charge, the supportive character is secretly kind of the real decision maker. Instead of telling people what to do or tiptoeing around etiquette to not seem like they're kind of bossing everyone at the table around, they'll be supportive of one choice and keep the game moving. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say a party of four reaches a bandit hideout and the group is deciding whether they want to stealth through the window or smash through the back door like your dad when your mom gets a little drunk. <laughs> like, 
Let me give you an example. Let's say a party of four reaches a bandit hideout and is deciding whether they want to stealth through the window or smash through the back door like the Kool-Aid man in a commercial from the 90s. The DM might let the group bounce ideas back and forth for 20 minutes before they step in and ask for an answer. Honestly, I've seen newer DMs maybe not even step in at all because they were trying to avoid looking like they were railroading their group. But a great supportive character will jump on another player's idea and keep the momentum going. They might say something akin to, I think that's a great idea, Jennifer. Let's send Sabrina through the window and have her lower a rope for Brian. By not being a wallflower and by not suggesting a third new option, this player has effectively moved the story along single-handedly and broken up stalemates. So this is just one of many examples, but DMs love when a player jumps in as a supportive narrative role to help the DM with pacing the game. Trust me, this one's a little manipulative, but in a clever and pretty helpful way. The next great player habit that Dungeon Masters love is when a player accepts failure. Guess what? On a D20, you have a 20% chance to roll four or lower every single time you roll. It's gonna happen sometimes during really inopportune times. It might even be on a saving throw to avoid damage that will drop you to zero. It's part of the game. Here's what you might not realize. Most Dungeon Masters, not all, but definitely the majority, are secretly rooting for you. We're an objective judge, sure, but that doesn't mean that we don't want you to make it to the end of the campaign. When you have a rough night with rolls, oftentimes we're bummed for you because your body language tells us you might not be having a fun time, which is like the opposite of why we've spent time and money and energy to play a game with you called Dungeons and Dragons. We want to have fun and we want you to have fun too. So when we see a player that can laugh off rolling three straight ones or even worse, maybe even a character death, that goes a tremendously long way for us, especially when juxtaposed with a player who is being overly vocal about their frustration, which as DMs, we do still understand as well. We get it, guys. One thing to add is, you know, remember D&D and Pathfinder and Starfinder and many fantasy games have not just one, but sometimes many ways to bring a beloved character back to life. If you ever have been chill about losing a character, just know that we appreciate it way more than you realize, especially because we're already double guessing ourselves in our encounter building, did we screw up? So thank you so much for just being chill about it. And finally, the last good Dungeons and Dragons player habit I wanna talk about is exactly that, a good player habit, which is simply telling your dungeon master that you had a good time and thanking them. DMing is hard, and odds are your DM spends many hours every week that you don't see, rereading a ruling that they got wrong last session, scouring the internet for new maps, reading blogs, and watching YouTube videos to learn new techniques or shore up areas of perceived weakness with new DM tips. And they love it when at the end of a four hour session that they spent another three hours preparing if you just let them know that you did in fact have a good time. Guys, it really does go a long way. So remember to thank your DM next time for me. Now I wanna pass it over to you guys in the community, Dungeon Masters. What are like the absolute favorite things <laughs> that you've seen players do at the table? What's something that made you smile or, or took some stress off your plate for the group's game? And if you're not a DM, what are some of the things that you've seen other players do that really wowed you and sort of made you wanna step up your own game? Let us know in the comments down below. Okay guys, so before I thank all of my amazing patrons and close this bad boy out, I wanted to take a few moments to spread some love and positivity by just boosting some of my favorite fellow creators here on YouTube. I'll be honest, not one of these creators is really a Dungeons and Dragons or RPG creator, but rather people on YouTube that I, Cody, <laughs> watch and enjoy. These are creators that I enjoy and maybe among all of the chaos that COVID has brought us, you might enjoy them as well during your quarantine. Okay, starting off this quick little list, we have a creator with the channel that is way smaller than it should be, so we need to fix that. His name is Steven Fitzgerald. Uh, Steven 
really cracks me up, man. He's right at about 34,000 subs, and it'd be awesome if you guys could help me boost him up to 40K by the end of the week. Uh, Steve makes 30 to 90 second sketch comedy clips about pop culture. He's hilarious, and I think YouTube probably punishes him because his videos are so short with the algorithm. So uh, show him some love and laugh your ass off while you're at it. Next up is Luke from Luke's APS. Uh, Luke is crazy talented and he just hit 100,000 subscribers. Uh, I've been watching Luke since he was about 30,000 subs and the guy is a borderline genius and mad talented. Just, just go watch him, that's it. Just go watch him uh, and, and subscribe to him, he's awesome. Then sort of on the other side of the spectrum we have Maniac. Oh man, Scott is blowing up here on YouTube, and deservedly so. I've been watching Scott since he was around 30,000 subs as well, and if you enjoy walking the fine line between crazy and genius, uh, then Maniac will be right up your alley. Both Scott and Luke will teach you entire new hobbies. You're welcome, or maybe you're not welcome. <laughs> Okay, then we have Jonathan Katz Moses, who I just realized is probably about to blow past my channel and maybe he can send me some luck. But uh, uh, I've been watching him for a while as well. And not only is he a super talented woodworker, but the dude is just bursting with positivity. Last month, the guy did a story time video about the time he intervened to help a couple being threatened and harassed and he ended up in the hospital. Uh, I won't spoil the rest, but besides all of his awesome woodworking video and content and all that stuff, uh, this video is definitely one I'd recommend, so link down below. And finally, we have a channel called Get Hands Dirty by Christina. I'm not gonna try to pronounce her last name, sorry. Uh, she is a badass woodworker from Portugal with incredible camera and editing work. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else you want. Uh, go subscribe to her and enjoy her just like awesome content. Her, her, her videos are just so good. So I promise you'll get lost in her, in her library. She's very, very good. I want to thank all of my amazing patrons over on welcomeadventures.com for being amazing. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see what David does for this month's map. Uh, you guys voted for this month's map last month in our group hangout, and you guys decided on an underground bandit hideout. So uh, he's already sent me some notes on that. He's supposed to send me a sketch today or tomorrow, and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So thank you guys so much for being a patron supporter. It matters so much to, to my wife and my child. So thank you guys. And me, and me, uh, of course me, but it matters to all of us. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Where are the other drugs going? Yeah.